Hey y'all, how are all my beautiful friends doing? I hope y'all all have had a great week and welcome back to Crime Time with Mal. Or if you are new, hi, my name is Mallory and thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today's video is all about Justin Evans. One of y'all on my live said that I needed to cover this case so I looked into it and y'all, I am speechless. I th This whole case is so frustrating and um, just horrible all around. I definitely think that there was a lack in um, the police field. Justin Evans was 22 years old when he was reported missing just before Christmas 2020. Everyone that knew Justin knew his disappearance was very suspicious and his family was desperate for answers. About five months after his disappearance, Justin's body was found very close to his home and police did not believe it was a homicide. So that leaves accident or him unaliving himself. His family does not believe that is the case. very happy at 22 year old and he loved his family. He especially loved his two sisters and would spoil the crap out of his younger sister, Maddie. He also loved to hang out at the house with his older sister, Kristen, and just hang out and relax. His family says that there are no siblings that are closer than these three. They were super, super close. They spent time talking, watching TV, and shopping, and Justin would actually buy Maddie, his younger sister, whatever she wanted. He was just a very generous person. He would take his sisters out for breakfast almost every single morning, and Justin also had more than 10 cousins, all under the age of 13, and he was just as great to them. During the pandemic, you know, Halloween kind of was at a halt, but Justin decided to dress up like a clown with his sisters as the ringmasters and he just wanted to make sure his family and his cousins had a great Halloween despite everything that was going on in the world. And each adult ended up setting up their own little area so that the kids can come by and trick or treat to them, which I think that is adorable. He worked at his grandparents store called Wise Choice and he quit when he was about 18. Tons of their customers remembered and loved Justin, and they constantly ask for updates on Justin. He loves to fish, and he loves outdoor activities, especially with his stepdad, James, who always went camping almost every single summer. At the time of his disappearance, he was living at Muskoka. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, you know, y'all know me in words. The mobile home park in Kilworthy. With his best friend since childhood, his two grandparents, Ken and Glenna, and his best friend Bud's girlfriend, Kiera. He worked a full-time job with Bud, his best friend, from midnight till 8 a.m., so the night shift. The two of them drove into work together because Justin did not have his driver's license at the time, and Bud would always give him a ride to and from work. On Justin's time off, he was typically known to spend time in his shed at the house and work on his motorcycle, work on a snowmobile, and just tinker with a bunch of different things. You know, just being a guy. That's what guys do, I feel like. And he would also spend time, of course, with his family. He would also just take time off of work just to spend time with his family, and he would not go anywhere without letting someone know where he was going. His home life was a little complicated though. Although he knew Bud since kindergarten, Bud's girlfriend, Kiara, didn't really like Justin. So I'm pretty sure that created some type of tension and conflict. You know, you always want your friends and your family to like the person that you're seeing or it can be very difficult. And Bud's grandparents, Ken and Glenna, were more like his parents because they are the ones that actually raised Bud. But Ken was known to actually drink a little bit too much, and when he would, it typically led into a physical altercation between him and Bud. Despite all of this, Justin did enjoy living at this house. He had his own space, and he contributed financially to the household. Saturday, December 12th, 2020, according to Bud's grandmother, Glenna, 
She fed Justin breakfast early that morning and she said everything to appeared to be normal. Like Justin was just acting like Justin. There was nothing really off about him. While he was eating breakfast, he told Glenna that he was going to go back out to his shed and just work on a few things around 8.30 in the morning. His shed is located just behind the trailer on the property. And according to Glenna, that is the last time she ever saw Justin. But Bud and Kiera tell a different story. So Bud and Kiera decided to go into Barry to get some Christmas presents and do some shopping. They said as they were pulling out of the driveway around 7 a.m., they saw Justin in Ken's shed and he waved to him. Now, Ken's shed is a completely different shed than Justin's shed. And it's not really said why he was actually in there or if he was in there, but th that, that's the story that's being told. And later on in this story, Glenna ends up telling people that she wasn't sure that if she served him breakfast that Friday or that Saturday. So now her story is changing just a little bit, but we'll get there. Now Bud's grandpa, Ken, ends up saying that he went with Bud and Kiera shopping, but they both said that's not true. Bud and Kiera head into Barrie, Ontario to do some shopping and along the way they pick up two other people. Around 3.44 later that evening, Justin's mom, Jamie, ends up receiving a text message from Justin's phone. He said that his time off was not confirmed yet for the week after Christmas. It was a very short text and very unlike Justin. You know when somebody's texting you. You know their style. You know how they talk. You know how they act. And Jamie doesn't even believe that that was really Justin that texted. Kiera and Bud said that they returned home later that evening from shopping and Justin was nowhere to be found. He wasn't in his shed, so they figured that he was sleeping in his bedroom or spending time with his family. And when dinner time came along, Justin was a no-show. And they say that this is typical because usually at this time, Justin is asleep and just misses dinner. But no one actually checks Justin's bedroom during this time. They just assume he's in there. The next day on Sunday, December 13th, Bud and Justin are scheduled to go into work together at midnight to 8.30 that next morning. Kira says when she woke up that morning, Justin's lights were not on in his bedroom, but his boots were gone. So they figure he's at his family's house. And once again, he does not show up for dinner that night as well. And this time, Bud decides to text Justin and find out where he is, but he does not get a response back. Now, at this time, I would be worrying that something's not right. You know, I mean, that's just me, though. Bud still doesn't check his room. He doesn't call his family to ask if they've seen him, and he just drives straight into work. When he arrives at work, he finds out that Justin is not there, and he did not call his crew leader to let him know that he wasn't going to show up. And again, this is not like Justin. Justin figures that he just took off work and took an extra long weekend because one day they were joking around together and he said that he was going to take an extra long weekend just to spend time with his family. Bud finishes his job and drives home and arrives back at the trailer around 9 a.m. And now this is Monday, December 14th. According to Bud, he goes straight to sleep and he does not check Justin's room and he doesn't text him, but Bud can't sleep. So he decides to get up and start looking for Justin. He finally goes into his bedroom and sees his wallet, which Justin does not leave without. And he also sees a duffel bag on his bed that he would usually take to his family's house when he's spending the weekend over there. So Bud figures that he is home and Glenna tells Bud to go out to his shed and check there to see if he is there. And when Bud goes to this shed, he opens the door and he says it is in complete disarray. It is not said what he found in there, but it is bad enough that he is shocked and he knows that he should call police. About 4.20 p.m. that afternoon, Glenna ends up calling Justin's grandmother and asks if anyone saw him because they have not seen him since Saturday morning, two and a half days later. Justin's grandma then calls his mom, Jamie, and she tells her what Glenna said, and Jamie immediately panics. 
She knows that Justin just wouldn't disappear. I think her mother's instinct kicked in and just knew something was wrong. She raced from work over to where Justin lived. And on the way, she tried calling Justin's phone over and over and over. And it just went to voicemail after it rang. Like it would ring and then it would go to voicemail. I am sure she is freaking out right now and has the biggest pit in her stomach. According to Jamie, Justin's mom, she called Glenna, who kind of laughed and said that they have not seen Justin since Saturday and this is not like him to just leave and not say anything. Jamie said that she yelled at her and told her to immediately call the police. When she arrived at the trailer, she was informed the police were almost there by a policeman that called her and told her not to go into the shed that Justin used just in case there is any evidence in there. They didn't want it to get destroyed. While she was waiting for the police, the grandparents, Bud and Kiara, told her their story. They said Bud and Ken went to Barry to go shopping and they did not mention anything about Kiara going, but then they changed their story and said that Ken never went. Glenna also told her that she saw Justin go into his shed around 8.30 in the morning on Saturday and nobody has seen him since. But they, the McKinney family, decided to wait until Monday at 4.15 in the afternoon to even call his family to find out if anybody has seen him. They told her that they thought that he was at her house, but their own words, Glenna's own words, she said that this isn't like Justin. Justin just doesn't leave to go somewhere without letting somebody know where he's going. And the shed gets taped off and it is being investigated because it is covered in blood. And police even said with the condition of the shed, it doesn't look like Justin would have been able to even make it alive. Justin's family is completely distraught, as you can imagine, and they are wanting answers. And police said his disappearance is criminally suspicious. Once the crime scene is documented and examined, they release it back to the grandparents. Justin's family comes and collects his belongings from the shed and his bedroom and notice that his cell phone and earbuds and his favorite sunglasses are missing. Now, let's back things up a little bit to just before Justin disappeared and when Bud and Kiara said that they saw Justin in Ken's shed. That was Saturday, December 12th, but some pretty strange things occurred right before this. The last time Justin was actually seen at work was Wednesday, December 9th, when he went in to work his usual shift with Bud. He was also supposed to work that following night, Thursday, December 10th. But he didn't go in, and Justin was not the one that actually called in. Bud called in. Now, why? Why would Bud call in sick for Justin? Was Justin that sick that he couldn't even pick up the phone to call his supervisor to let him know that he wasn't going to come in? And it's not really clear what happened that next day on Friday, December 11th. But we do know that Justin was supposed to go to a birthday party that evening for a friend and he also did not show up to that and did not even let his friend know that he was not going to make it. So Bud and Kiara report last seeing Justin that Saturday, December 12th, early that morning. And Glenna says that she can't remember, not 100% sure, if she fed him breakfast that Friday or Saturday. Okay. So besides Bud and Kiara, the last known reported sighting of Justin was Wednesday, December 9th when he was at work. It's just very strange to me and the timelines don't seem to match up to what is being said. Y'all know? You feel me? Am I in the wrong? Am I in the right? I don't know. This is just really confusing. There's a lot of back and forth between Justin's family and the McKinney family because they're aggravated to be completely honest they're pretty pissed that it took them this long to even notify anybody that justin hasn't been seen in two and a half days or more on january 18th 2021 now justin has been missing for a month and bud turns to facebook and writes a message 
He says, I feel like I have to make a post about everything going on. I waved to Justin, who was in my dad's shed at 7 a.m. on December 12th, 2020, as my girlfriend and I were headed out to Barry for Christmas shopping with her sister and her boyfriend, not knowing that would be the last time I'd see my best friend. And my girlfriend and I got home after dropping her sister and her boyfriend off just before dinner that night around 5.30 to 6 p.m. I asked if Justin was home. My mom said she hadn't seen him since that morning. For some context, Justin and I work at the midnight shift from midnight to 8 a.m. Mine and Justin's sleep schedule are backwards from one another. He will normally stay awake all morning and crash whenever he can. And I'll normally go to bed when we get home and get up around 2 p.m. So for the past few years, it hasn't been uncommon for Justin to sleep through dinner if he's not going anywhere on the weekends. Because it's hard to flip your sleep schedule as a midnight shift worker, the next morning when I got up and seen Justin still wasn't around, I just assumed he'd gone to his mom's as he does most weekends. Justin and I aren't the tell me where you're going or what you're up to every minute of every day type of friends. We vent about our problems, hang out, and tell jokes to each other, so I wasn't worried about him till Sunday night came around and he hadn't answered my text. I went into work to find out that he hadn't called in or text our crew boss. Justin had joked about taking a long weekend, but for him not to call in or text myself or our crew boss was very strange. Monday morning, I called him a few times and it rang through to his voicemail. That made me worry less because at the time, I thought all phones worked the same and would only ring through if the phone was on. I also know that Justin could sleep through an alarm even if it was taped to his forehead. So I tried to get some rest and let him wake up and text me back. I couldn't go to sleep and got up at 12 p.m. and started looking for him. Found his travel bag, charger, and wallet. After that, my mom suggested I check his shed to see if maybe he came home and was sitting out there smoking his green and listening to his book. I found his shed in disarray and called his parents and the police once they said he wasn't there for the weekend. I then went asking our neighbors if they see him. I've sadly learned since then that most cell phones ring through so the caller doesn't think they're being ignored. Justin and I were like brothers. We helped each other through shit from family stuff to weird bodily functions. It didn't matter. Justin years ago jokingly adopted the saying, we were best friends. That means your BS is my BS and my BS is your BS. We would remind one another about that even years later, especially when one of us noticed something was wrong with the other. Justin and I have known each other since kindergarten. That's 16 years. I've had the amazing opportunity to call him my best friend. Justin never seemed off the week leading up to that day other than he'd made a mistake and hurt himself on a snowmobile the weekend before and said it was hurting quite a bit. It never mattered what it was, Justin and I would push through it together whether it was kindergarten spelling bees, learning to drive, or family problems. We had each other's back and we would help one another stand. We'd never let the other fall no matter how hard it got so for some of you POSs to go running to the damn cops in Facebook telling people I might have killed Justin with no better reason than I think or I heard when you barely know us is a effing joke. You're pathetic, F you, you walk around claiming you know something, you barely know your head from your ass. If you know something helpful like where you might have seen him, please go to the OPP, Crime Stoppers, or something. There are dozens of links for anonymous reports, and I've heard there is money for anyone who brings forward any info about him that helps find him. Please, I've walked around our area and talked to some people, but no one seems to know anything. If a vehicle or people that seem to be out of place, then please say something. It doesn't matter if it was in Kilworthy area Gravenhurst, not say this next town, Bracebridge, it doesn't matter if it was a weird vehicle or person, please, it only takes a moment for a call or email that might bring 
an end to what's been a very long and hard month for his family and friends. Again, please, any information that could help bring him home would be greatly appreciated. I'm tired of the theories. I want facts. Have you seen or heard anything or even been somewhere you think he might be? Thank you to everyone who's giving helpful info. Without you, we'd be no closer to having answers. So that's intense, and obviously there's a bunch of finger pointing and friction and hearsay and blaming. That same month in January, another suspicious death in the same trailer park that Justin lived in occurs, and police are saying that it is suspicious. It is another guy around the same age as Justin, and they used to hang out on occasion. At the time, police are not sure if the two cases are related, but later on it comes out and police say that they believe that this kid ended up, or young man, ended up unaliving himself by a train. On Wednesday, May 19th, five months after Justin disappeared, police were called after human remains were discovered. The body was about four blocks away from Justin's trailer in a swampy area. The body was later confirmed to be Justin Evans. Immediately, Justin's family is upset and distraught that he was found so close to his home where police said that they searched. But now they're saying that police did not search that area. The body is taken to medical examiner, and while the family awaits for answers, Ken McKinney is arrested and charged with obstruction of justice. This came from when Ken ended up saying that he went with Bud and Kiara shopping, and he did not, in fact, go with them shopping. And shockingly to the family, more charges to Ken were never filed. But then a huge shock to everyone changed events from that day forward. On June 1st, police announced that they do not feel that Justin was murdered. They said they do not feel like they were investigating a murder and Justin's case does not look criminally suspicious. Now what's odd about this is they make this announcement before the medical examiner or pathology reports or toxicology reports even got released. And the case was changed from suspicious disappearance to an ongoing death investigation. Justin's mom said that him and his sisters were planning to visit Cuba and that Justin was wanting to go to Vancouver to visit some family that lived there. He just got a new cell phone. He already purchased Christmas gifts for his family and friends, and he was planning for the future. So needless to say, his family does not believe that he would unalive himself. And to me, it doesn't sound like he would either. If you're going to plan to do that, you don't typically make future plans. You don't go get Christmas gifts that's a couple weeks away. You don't plan trips with your family. Now let's talk about how police initially said that there was so much blood in the shed that Justin wouldn't have been able to survive. So let me get this straight. Justin unalived himself or hurt himself so bad in the shed that there is blood everywhere. Then walked out bleeding everywhere four blocks down the road, passing trailers and neighbors just to die in a swampy area. No one saw him. No one saw a blood trail. Like none of that makes sense. And to this day, they still have not found Justin's phone or his earbuds. So where are those? He just throw those away when he decided to unalive himself. However, Justin's favorite pair of white sunglasses ended up turning up on Bud's head. He was seen in pictures wearing those sunglasses on Facebook and people started to ask about that. He told them that right before Justin disappeared, he bought those sunglasses off of him. Now, I find that a little odd, too. I'm not saying that Bud is guilty, but there's a lot of stuff that does not make sense. Like, why did he buy his sunglasses from Justin? Why didn't Bud just go out and buy a brand new pair of sunglasses? And then on June 5th, Bud made another Facebook post. I have been keeping quiet about this for a long time, and now I think it's only right that I share. I believe... 
I believe Justin is gay. And all this time I've known Justin, he has never taken a serious relationship with a girl seriously and has never cared about being broken up with or being broken or breaking up with them. The last time Justin was in a relationship was in high school, and since then he never talked about girls. He would talk about relationships, but it was never specifically about girls, and he would be vague and keep those conversations short. Shortly after Justin went missing, people messaged Kiara to tell her Justin was on Grindr. Grindr is a dating app for people in the LGBTQ plus community, to my understanding. Lots of people questioned Justin's sexuality. He was a very flamboyant person. I feel that night Justin might have been getting closer to coming out because when we had a road trip one weekend, the topic of LGBTQ plus community were brought up and we told him if he was gay that he was more than welcome to tell us. I told him that his secret would be safe with us and I would never judge him for that. Usually when this topic was brought up, Justin would get defensive, listen to what people say, and shove it off. This time, though, Justin just said, thank you, I really appreciate that. Later on, we had stopped somewhere, and Justin confided in us and told us he didn't like it when people asked him that because one time a family member called him, put him on speaker, and began to ask him over and over if he was gay and just to admit it, Justin said he heard a roar of laughter on the other end of the phone and had never been so humiliated in his life. I kept this quiet for such a long time because I felt like I was betraying Justin if I told people this info. Justin, if he was, wasn't out of the closet and I didn't want to be the one to share it. Justin deserved so much more, and if I could have told him one more thing that day, it would have been that he was loved no matter who he loved. One of my theories since the beginning was that Lucas and Justin had a secret relationship and things went south. I never really seen anyone at Lucas's, only once in a while. Lucas lived alone, and I'm pretty sure he was closest to Justin's age. I truly believe that someone murdered Justin up until now because we are somewhat relieved that if he unalived himself that Justin was ready to leave and no one made him go. It's still devastating that he is gone, but it's more comforting knowing his life wasn't just ripped away. This is all a theory, but it has been stuck with me since the beginning. I hope heaven is treating you well, buddy. I love and miss you. Now, the settings on his Facebook are set to public, so anyone can see this. And, and I find it really odd that now that he's saying that Justin unalived himself, that he feels comfortable releasing such private, confidential matters out for everyone to see. On August 14th, 2021, Jamie ended up writing a post on the Justice for Justin Facebook group. Jamie writes, after three months, the coroner finally called. There's more information coming soon, but I wanted to get this information out there. We told them he would not do this, and they were wrong, but they wouldn't listen. My son was murdered. OPP failed Justin. Hashtag justice for Justin. On July 13th, 2021, another update was made on the Justice for Justin website. Ken McKinney pled guilty to the charges of obstruction of justice. The matter was set to be heard on August 3rd at 9 a.m. He did not have a lawyer present and he did express to the court that a lawyer was not in his means. Ken was sentenced to six months house arrest and only allowed off of his property for emergencies, medical, or on Saturdays from 12 to 3 for necessities of life. Now the question is, why would Ken even lie about going to Barry with Bud and Kiara? Like, what was the point of that lie? He stated to the court that he wanted to hide the fact that he was on a four-day bender. This is just odd to me, and in my opinion, I do absolutely think that the police dropped the ball on this case. I hope that justice is served for Justin. And y'all, please keep his name out there. If you share this video or if you share any articles of his, please use the hash hashtag justice for Justin. Do not let people forget about his name.
If you have any information at all on the Justin Evans case, somebody has to know something. Please, for the love of God, find it in your heart and do what is the right thing. You can call Bracebridge OPP at 1-888-310-1122 or you can call Crime Stoppers at 1-800-222-8477. Now again, somebody has to know something. So I'm just praying that they do what is the right thing to do and his family can get the answers that they deserve. Y'all let me know down below what you think about this case. If you have heard about it, I am in complete disbelief and I, my heart goes out to this family. I hope, I really hope and pray that they get justice very, very soon because this is mind blowing. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you support my channel and you just want to spread awareness for Justin. It helps with that as well. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed and, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss whenever I upload a video. YouTube should notify you. Some of y'all said that y'all did not get notified when I went live, but when you click that bell, make sure that it says all notifications. Hopefully that works. And y'all, please stay safe out there. Have a great weekend and be aware of your surroundings. I, I love y'all so much and thank you so very much for all your support. And I will see you in Tuesday's video. Bye y'all.